And ABC's Brit Klenet joins me live now from Kyiv, Ukraine, for more on this. Uh, Brit, President Zelensky said about a third of the country's power stations have been destroyed in the last week. What's the impact there? Does this go beyond Ukraine? Well, Diane, at least two people have died after attacks on energy infrastructure in Kyiv, leaving tens of thousands of residents in some districts without power and without water. Now, President Zelensky says 30 percent of the country's power stations have been destroyed over the last week. The government describing the situation here as critical. Now, in some cities, Ukrainians are buying power generators and gas burners, while some are urged to reduce their energy consumption at peak times. Some are even facing rolling uh, blackouts. Uh, but the energy crisis is a huge uh, concern for Ukrainians. You know, these power plant attacks are seriously threatening to interrupt the energy supply, which includes, you know, heating, water, electricity, ahead of the cold winter months, which are just around the corner. Now, Zelensky has called for more help with air and missile defense systems. We also know residents have been sheltering in place as air raid sirens are, are going off over the last few days. What else is Ukraine doing and what can it do to protect its people and its skies? Well, it's worth noting that it did manage to shoot down a portion of the kamikaze drones that flew into Kyiv uh, on Monday, but it obviously wants that success rate to be far higher. You know, U.S. officials believe Russia's military is running low on precision-guided weapons, which is why they're turning to Iran for help. But a senior U.S. official says uh, it's trying to get more air defense systems to Ukraine within the next several weeks, and it called this an area of emphasis. Ukraine says these attacks of terror that we've seen on Monday, that we've seen the morning that we saw last Monday that they're proof that they really need more air defense systems and sophisticated ones. Today Ukraine will also send an <clears throat> official note to the government of Israel uh, with a request to provide Ukraine with more air defense systems too. Now Brit, Russia's state-owned news agency is also saying that 13 people were killed in a fire after a Russian fighter jet crashed during a training flight. What do we know about that? Yeah, Diane, so the death toll has climbed to at least 13 and three children were among the victims. We know that dozens more were injured in that crash, so that number is expected to rise even more. Russian authorities are blaming engine failure for the crash and the Russian side has also opened a criminal case and sent investigators to the scene. Uh, but this is a port town near eastern Ukraine, across the Sea of Azov, and it's been used as a major training ground for the Russian army, for the Russian navy, for some time. All right. And, and Britt, uh, President Zelensky is now saying that there is no room for negotiation with Vladimir Putin. So is there a potential end in sight to this war? I mean, the pathway um, it seems to be getting more and more narrow as the days go on, especially with that uh, attack that we saw on Monday and the week before. So it is hard to see how peace negotiations can be brought forward at this point of time. Certainly the rhetoric from both sides is growing, and it's hard to see how each one will be brought to the negotiating table. All right, Britt Klinet, we appreciate it. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.